Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Nigel here with you with part 16, is it now, of this uh, Vulcan build, the new tool from Airfix. Um, so where have we got to? What have I done off camera? As you know, we did all the white. Uh, I went over it and did. you can see we've got this lovely, well, what I think is a lovely blotchy effect on it. And you can see now we've got a gloss coat on it. I used um, this one for a gloss. I haven't used this stuff for years. I thought I'd give it a go on this because it's going to need so much of it. This is the Alclad 2 Lacquers Clear Coat Gloss and it is like a lacquer. Um, it goes down and the reason I've used it is I remember it kind of bites into the paint. So because we had this issue with the warmth and the paint drying fast, I know that I've got a good key now so everything's biting in. And uh, and then I've given it a polish back with a 2,500 grit sanding sponge. So we've got a nice smooth surface now for our decals to go on. Some people say you don't need to, um, you don't need to gloss. Will Patterson did a video on it and to a certain extent I agree, it doesn't need to be gloss, it just needs to be smooth. But the one way you can guarantee you won't get any silver in is to put a gloss coat down. Now, even at this stage with this very light sheen on it, I still run a chance of having some silvering. Um, so if you really want to guarantee you don't get silver in, Get it absolutely glossy and gleaming. The problem with this is we've got all these lovely little details, all these panel lines and everything, and I don't want to fill them up with gloss varnish. So that's why I'm not going too heavy. I think we'll be okay. It's only really stencils on the bottom, I think. Yeah, there's no um, roundels or anything on the bottom. So it's just going to be stencil data. So we should be okay. The only problem is stencil data, being they're so small, they're the worst ones for silvering. So, and it is underneath. Well, you know, we'll, we'll give it a go. We'll get there. So basically that's it, that's that down, all polished up and everything, and I've managed to lift that mask, I'll have to remask that light, I think, rather than waste a circle, I'll just push that one back down. Um, all this will be getting now is after it's all done, it's going to get a flat coat. I will flatten this back completely, reason being, uh, I don't know if I can pick it up in the light here and show you, but once you put a gloss coat on there, you can really see the sink marks. Um, we've got it here, we've got it here. You see, where are we? it's right at this air brake, we've got it here, um, we've got it all down here, all on the um, ailerons, we've got it, and um, you can see it just across the middle of the ailerons, there's like a sink line, uh, there's even a sink line on the back of the ailerons. Um, so, yeah, if you're wanting to do, because I know some Vulcans are glossy and everything, if you want to go glossy, then you know, you. Uh, you're going to struggle because it's going to shut. You can see it here in front of this wheel bay. You can see the sink in there. Okay. Um, and it's just everywhere. There's sink marks. You see it across here. If we can get it in the light. You can see a sink mark all across there. Um, obviously, we've already done all these along here and all the wingtips and everything. There's a line in here and a line in there. But I'm assuming, I don't know if I can catch it in the light so you can see it. But there is a line there you can see it now there's a line here and there is a line here you can just see it there and i'm thinking that's part of the design rather than a sink mark because there's nothing behind there to cause it to sink we've also got it symmetrical on both sides so i'm thinking that's part of the model but um no it is literally covered in them so yep well done airfix great job so now we've done the underside and got that all done, I have to be careful with putting it down. I'm going to have to make something up and tape it to the bottom to protect it. I've got to mask it all off anyway because our camouflage is going to go over the edge, the leading edge and all around the intakes. So we've got to mask that off anyway. Um, this has been painted now for about 20 hours and it still feels like a little sticky because it's got Mr. Hobby under it as well. And that takes a little while to dry. So I've got to be careful handling. I don't put any finger marks in it. But uh, there we go. Um, paper. So uh, the next thing to look at is actually fitting the canopy. Now there's a problem here. The standard Vulcan had a problem. The headrests were so close to the canopy that apparently the, uh, the uh, pilots used to complain after a long mission of having a quick neck because when they were flying the Vulcan they would actually be sat there with their heads on an angle being forced away from the, the roof of the canopy. So I'll get this tape off and put it there because we're going to put it back on in a minute. Um, so we got the canopy, got it out of the bag, cut it off the sprue, cleaned it all up and everything, put it on. And I noticed that the seats were actually fouling the canopy, lifting it away. So what I did, I came along with a black pen. Let me zoom you in here. So you can see what I'm talking about. Came along with a black pen and made a mark. Let me zoom you a bit more. There we go. 
they made, came along with a black pen, made a mark where the seats touched, and then came along with a round blade. This is a number 10 blade in the Swan Morton scalpel range, and just scraped away the inside of the canopy in that area where the seats are. And then I still couldn't get it to go down. Now, obviously, I, I'm really, really scared of, of going through here. So, um, it's not focusing. But um, basically, I'm really scared of going through. So, I'm still learning this camera, guys. So, um, basically, I didn't want to go through. I've said that three times now. Just focusing out. Here we go. Here we go. A bit too far. There we are. Right, so what I did, made a black mark inside there, scraped it out, and then I've had to sand, as you can see here, I've sanded away part of the, uh, the corners of the seats. You're not going to really going to see it, because when I put the canopy on, you can see that once those, that front screen is masked up, if you cover my finger is, you can see nine-tenths of bugger all. You've got the holes on the side, but you're not going to see those top corners of the seats anyway, so... You can either just sand the seats away or do what I did and scrape away the inside of the canopy, but you can see it's still not quite going down. You can see it's got a bit of a, a spring in it. But um, you know what we'll do is we'll take that down and I will glue this on with extra thin. Um, as I always do, I will run up to the edge. Around here it doesn't matter because all this is painted. Around this front edge here, it's fairly rough, but if you look at a real Vulcan, you will see that they are quite rough in real life, as you can tell from this image. You can see on here that the um, the canopy framing is quite rough. So when I say rough, I mean rough in comparison to something like a you know an airliner or something like that. So basically, we're going to be getting that glued on. I'm going to put this over just to protect them because I'm going to be turning it over in a minute to mask. I want to I don't want to put the canopy on until the last minute because uh, I've got to paint all this black anyway first. So I'm just doing that just to protect those seats. So. We've got all our other bits and pieces here as well, they're all gloss coated. So looking now at the camouflage, okay, let me get this model out of the way. I'm going to show you some findings. Okay, so first of all, if we, this is going to drive the white balance mad, if we take the Airfix colour chart, okay, here, try to make it so it's not glossy, uh, you can see they've got a camouflage pattern there. So what you could do is print this off, enlarge it, and then use that as your pattern. The problem is, I think this camouflage pattern is incorrect. Uh, this area here, where it goes around the roundel, I don't like that. I don't like the area here, um, and I don't like the shape on the tailplane either. Um, not the tailplane, sorry, the fin. Now, if we look in our V Bombers book, and we go to this image here, which is XH562, which is the model I'm at the plane I'm actually doing, you can see that camouflage pattern there is completely different to what Airfix have done. Okay, now this is from a different era, I know, but I'm looking at the images of the Vulcan and they all look pretty similar. I mean, we can see we've got a bit of a difference in this one here to that one there. Um, that is a B2. But they, there is there is a bit of variation in them, so you need to be careful of it, if you're after accuracy, which one you actually do. But if we look at all these images of all these Vulcans in here, in this book, and, and, and photographs, or only, I'm going to go by photographs and nothing else. Now you can see here there's a difference in these two. Okay, Very subtle, but there is a difference. Look at, the, look at the shape of the camouflage around the nose there and look at it here. But I've noticed that on XH562 it has a camouflage which is more depicted by that image that I found back here rather than what Airfix have done. So I thought, oh, I've also got these decals, haven't I? I've got these aftermarket decals. So... What have I done with them? Here they are. I got the sheet from the aftermarket decals and had a look at them. And what they've done here, they've made all of their schemes the same. Although they've got different colour undersides and stuff, different colour noses and different colour um, nipples on the front, I call it. They, they're all basically the same. And I'm not sure that's correct. But looking at pictures of XH562 online, it looks like it's more representative of this. Okay, this than this. So I'm not going to use that as a guide for my camouflage. I'm going to use this. So what I've done, I measured this up, took a copy of it and then printed it out. I think it's 412% bigger. So there we have the camouflage and if I put the aircraft here upside down, because obviously if I put it the right way up, the fin will be in the way, you can see that I can put that on there and it is near enough. Perfect. So what I can do now is I can cut this out 
and that can be my template for doing my camouflage. I can either cut it out and draw around it, I can cut just sort of short of the line and then I can use tape and, and use it as a mask. I could use that as a mask if I was going for a soft edge camo. I could cut this out and then stick it on my bits of blue tack and then use that as the mask. Um, but make sure the paper is not touching the surface because the paint will get between the paper and the model. Capillary action will pull the paint in. The paper will stick to your model and it will make a mess. So um, basically we have got our camouflage there. So I'll show you how I use that probably in this video. So there we go. So what I've got to do now is basically mask all around these edges of these wings, mask around here, okay, and then what we can do is stick a piece of paper towel or a double over piece of paper towel on the bottom, make sure it's all masked up, make sure it's all nicely covered, and then this will be protected then. And then when I turn it over and put it on the bench and everything, we're not going to be wearing the paint off in the areas where it touches. So let me get that done and then I'll come back. Okay, so a few seconds for you, um, about three hours for me doing all this, I think, about two hours maybe. Uh, so basically, I have now got these little windows here are masked, you can see, and they are done with three millimeter, these little circle masks. This is the medium set, available for premium hobbies, absolutely awesome. So there's the three millimeter one, and then I've used the five millimeter ones in the, in the canopy on the sides here. Okay, you can see in there on those areas there. And then I've done all this round here freehand, as you can see. Um, it's a little bit softly moulded, but then, you know, it's my least favourite thing. If you're going to get a masking set, if you hate canopy masking, get a masking set. You know, it's, uh, it's not the best. But um, I'm going to be spraying this black anyway, uh, and, then, and then going over with the colour. And then what we can do after we take the masking tape out, if we've used acrylic paint, we can go on with a cocktail stick after it's painted and just tidy it all up a bit. Put a bit of wash around it, that often cleans up the lines if you get any tatty lines or anything. But you can see there it's um, it's masked. So we've got the wipers masked off as well, they're a bit big and chunky. Um, it's, it's it's a little bit of a letdown, I think, this canopy. That, but then most Airfix kits, the clear parts are, aren't they? But um, I, I think it could have been done with a bit more finesse. You know. Anyway, so Jess has decided to start playing now. So that's that all done. Um, so obviously under here now you can see we've got paper towel and paper here, which is driving the camera crazy. Um, and here we've got the 18 millimeter wide. This is the Mr. Hobby masking tape, which is my least favorite. I much prefer the Tamiya. Then the darker yellow you can see here, that's the Tamiya six millimeter. That's my favorite masking tape. And then the white you can see along there is the Tamiya flexible tape. It's a vinyl tape and it's very, very flexible, very easy to work with. And you can also peel it up and down and a lot and, and mess around with it. Unlike this paper stuff, once you, once you sort of lift it up and down a couple of times, it does lose its stickiness a lot. Now, as we know with the Vulcan, we've got the areas uh, around the intakes and along the Legion edge of the wing where the camouflage actually wraps over. Mm -hmm. So what I've done, I use this Infini cutting mat, okay? And I've cut some, you can see them here. We can make them out in the camera. You can see them here. I've, I've actually cut some two millimeter strips and then I've laid the two millimeter strips along the center line of the wing, basically the seam line. So now what I can do is come along and take that off because what I've done, I've put the white tape up to the edge of that. So I should end up with an even two millimeters all the way along the edge of the wing. Okay, so you know, it's gonna be as good as we can get it. So we can do the same on this one, take this one off of here. Make sure that there has gone down. Take it off of there, and then we've got a masked sort of even two millimeter line all around the edge. Just get rid of this tape. Just stick to my fingers. Um, and then we've got a sort of masked two millimeter line all the way around the edge of there. We've got hair stuck under that tape there, so we'll get rid of that now. And then we'll um, make sure these corners are all good and everything. This radius here, I use this Infini mat. Look at that, that's balanced. <laughs> uh, I use this Infinity mat and I cut around the basic outer radius on there. This is cutting type, cutting mat type D. And I cut, put the tape over, cut around it, take it off and then just stick it around there so we've got a nice even radius around the, around the intakes. Along here I've used Tamiya 6mm tape and what I found is if you line the tape up with the seam line along the edge of this panel here, so I'm off the camera, 
if you line the tape up with the edge of the seam of this panel here then you end up with a nice line there where you need it to be. Uh, obviously all this is masked up, there's going to be a black area here but don't worry about that at the moment. Um, then around the tail, oh I haven't masked the centre area of the tail have I? That was so uh, silly. So what I'll do is I'll take a piece of 18mm masking tape and then put that down on the board and then what I'll do is come on and cut a V into that and then I can put that on there and put that down and that should do us. Now there's a bit empty down the sides there so what I can do is take this bit that I've cut off of here and I can stick that there and then this bit I've cut off of here I can stick that there. There we go, that's the tail all masked up now. Okay, so there we are. So we're not worried too much about this back area because we're going to be sort of coming in from the side here uh, and spray in from, from the side in here. But um, this, this leading edge is going to be getting paint directly painted at it, so we need to make sure that that's all well masked. Also, if you've done what I've done here and make use paper towel, make sure you don't get any wet paint don't spray really wet and get it onto that because what will happen is it'll soak into there and then go into the paint below it. The one thing I am hoping is that we don't lift any paint when we take this masking tape off because as I say this was only painted like 20 hours ago the white and um, there's a chance that it may lift. What we will do we will go around all the edges before we actually paint and make sure that this masking tape is all down because as you can see in certain areas it'll start to lift where it doesn't want to go around a curve or whatever, it'll start to lift. So you just push it back down and make sure it's down directly before you paint. All right, so uh, we're good to go now. We'll, have to, we'll give this a coat of primer, I think, before we go. In fact, I may just use the Latamia lacquer. Well, not, am I going to use lacquer paints? No, I'm not. So I may just put some Mr. Surfacer on there. Um, but the next thing i got to do is remove this masking carefully. And then I have got to mask those seats carefully and basically um, paint this area around here black. I'm going to put this on my hand to remove the tack so it's not so sticky and then I can put this tape around the back of the seats and tuck that down in just like so. Grab my tweezers and push that down in there and then I can grab my tweezers again push that down in there and then give that a bit of a squeeze together and that should do us at the end of the day if we get a bit of overspray in there it's not the end of the road I mean it's all bloody black anyway so just go cut that over there I mean, what you could have done in hindsight, what we could have done is left the seats out, I think, and put them in after. So what I need to do now is just make sure I've got that area in there covered. So what I need to do is grab a bit of foam, a piece of foam. Oh, I've used, again, I've used that foam that was in here. I cut that in half and shoved that into here, into the exhaust, to make sure that we don't get paint up between them. Um, so I'm going to grab a piece of foam, just like this. That should be enough. And I can push that down in there. It's a cotton bud to push it down in. Being careful we don't break those control columns off. That's too big. So I'm going to cut that in half. And then I should be able to stick that down in there. You would not believe, Jess is down here to my left, watching every move I make. Maybe she wants to do an Airfix Vulcan. Mm. Somebody said I was making a dog's dinner of this kit, so maybe that's what she heard and thinks she wants to do a dog's dinner. But she does like a dog's dinner. Right, so if that foam's down in there now. Make sure it's gone under. And then we may have to make sure you know, we get a bit of black around there. I may have to pull the foam down in. And just make sure I get some black around that top edge. Or just push the foam down in now. Don't want to break those control columns off. There we go. So that's cool. So we can paint all this area around here now. That's all good. Good to go. Um, and then we can actually get our canopy fitted. 
just like so what we're going to, what we're going to do is put, put the canopy in place make sure everything's all clean inside tape it in place and then round with the mr with the mr server with the extra thin and just leave it let it go off leave it for a few hours let it go off and then we can do the the seams and make sure they're all good um but i mean this whole canopy comes off in real life anyway there's this this part of the canopy here this part of the windshield stays in place this comes off if they want to eject and then basically around the front edge here it's quite chunky as i said before so um we don't need to really really worry about a perfect seam but we obviously don't want any gaps so what i may well do is go in with the mr surfacer and then go around with the cotton bud and just make sure we don't have any gaps in there because it's not impossible to see uh, with the clear which we may have to actually paint it black first but i'm going to be painting it black first so the inside of the inside of the canopy is black and then we'll put the camouflage color over over the top of that so let me get this painted black and then i'll be back okay so that's painted black now now <clears throat> in one of my videos i mentioned well i think it was when i was doing the bombs i mentioned about using XF86 flat clear, but this uh, ultra matte varnish was much flatter, much matter. And someone commented that um, you can make this go just as flat by using uh, alcohol or something else. I can't remember what they mentioned now. But um, I've just sprayed some on there with alcohol because I used XF85 and it had a bit of a sheen to it. And you can see that is not matte at all. So just to show you the difference, I mean, I'm... I'm not criticising what the person has said, uh, because why would you lie about such a subject? There's no, no need to. Um, but basically, I can put a couple of drops of this in the airbrush and spray this. <clears throat> Again, light, low co light coats from a distance. All right, And watch what happens. If I get it in the camera so you can see the sheen, watch what happens as I spray it. Okay, I've just misted that on. Now I'm going to cut back to air, dry it off. And as you can see now, that is absolutely dead flat, which is what I want. Okay, I can put a bit more on. I just want to make sure that, that foam isn't over the edge. So I'm just going to pull the foam back. Just dust some on that. Go back to air, and before your very eyes, you can see it just goes absolutely dead flat. So, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, guys. I, I sprayed it lightly, I, I mixed it sort of 50 50 with IPA, um, and I just can't get it to go flat. Just cannot get this stuff to go dead matte ever. So, there we go. So, I've got to take that sponge out now. That's got that out, nothing but broken, luckily. And we can pull this tape off, like so. And now we can see we've got a lovely looking cockpit in there. I've got to touch those seats up, I think. Or are, are we going to see that or not? We're not, but I'm just going to, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, just to cheat, just to make things quick, so we can get on and get this canopy glued on. There we go. They're black again now <laughs> so we can put our canopy on get it taped down and when we look through the windows we're not going to see that area at all anyway so uh there we are we can see we've just got a tiny bit of spring in there as i said i've taken i've scraped quite a lot of the inside of that canopy out i don't know if you'll be able to pick it up on the camera how much i've actually taken out but um no you're not going to see it but it's actually got quite a, a divot in there so uh, and then sanded a bit off the seats as well so there we go. What you might want to do with yours is shorten the seat bases, make the seats sit a little lower. That'll help. But um, anyway, I expect what Airfix have done is made the cockpit to scale. Everything else is to scale, but of course because of the thickness of the plastic, it's much, much thicker than the actual real canopy would have been. You know, if it's a millimetre thick, that's a scale 72 millimetres thick, and it wouldn't have been that thick. So. There we are. So now what we can do is get that tape down and get it glued on. OK, so this is all a little bit controversial. Um, a lot of people like to use uh, Crystal Clear. Where's my Crystal Clear? There it is. No, it's, yes, it is. Crystal Clear, this product here for digging, the, uh, digging, sticking their canopies down. 
I don't like it because for sticking canopies down because it's a PVA it doesn't go hard so you can't really work the seam unless you wet it and brush it around and everything. Um, I always like to use extra thin where I can. If it's plastic I like to stick it with plastic cement as much as possible. Um, one thing is just remember I managed to break the rudder off. The, uh, sorry, the, the, uh, yeah, the rudder. So um, I've actually glued that back in with super glue, which I may live to regret because as we all know, super glue is very brittle. Um, but basically, yeah, I, I don't like to use PVA glue for clear parts if I can help it. It's handy sometimes on like headlamps and stuff because you put this stuff in and if you've got silver paint, you get like, a dark ring around it. Whereas if you use the PVA, it just dries dead clear. If you've got like an old kit where the, ta the, the, the lenses don't fit very well, say like something like an MX-5, NB Mark II, um, and you've got these sort of teardrop lenses that go on and you might have a gap around there, use the crystal clear and it will dry dead clear and it will fill the gap as well. So stuff like that, yeah. Um, or if you want to take it off again afterwards. But what I'm going to do is use extra thin because it's my favourite way. Now I've got this tape down and as you can see I've made sure the tape is not touching the seams and saying that the tape is touching the seam back there. So I'm just going to make sure it's not touching the seam. I do not want the, it wouldn't really matter back here because this won't be painted, but I do not want the glue to capillary under the tape. Okay, so taking my extra thin, making sure there's not too much on the brush, I could come along here and literally dab it down and you'll see it move, walking around. You'll see it moving around under the clear part. There you go. And this is the beauty, when, when they give you the frame, with the clear part. Sometimes manufacturers these days, the edge of the part is actually the edge of the clear. So it's a nightmare. But with this we're lucky. You've got the frame on the edge. So all good. So I can come along here now. You can see that capillary down underneath that join there. And what I'm doing is walking up to it with the glue. I'm not I'm not going straight at it. I'm sort of pushing the, the glue up to the, the brush up to the seam and allow it to work under. Okay now it's not very important back here because it's all going to be painted anyway it may as well just be a, a grey piece of plastic but I want to make sure I get some glue in there because there's a seam line there and I'm just going to make sure we've got plenty under there. There we go. So that will work its way around now. Now there's an indentation in my part there. I don't know if you can see that. Just here, my clear part has an indentation in it. Is that correct or is that faulty? I'll have to check that out. Uh, so that's all down now. And as I say, around this, around this front edge here, I think we're going to have to use some um, Mr. Surfacer to get it tidied up. Looking a bit cleaner. But uh, there we go. Put a drop more under there. You see, I let the brush roll up to the join, up to the seam, and that should dry on there absolutely solid. Okay, so there we go. Happy that that's gone. So we'll leave that to dry for a good few hours um, rather than risk having it move around or anything. But as you can see, it's gone down lovely. What we're going to do afterwards, when we've got the all, the all the works done, I'm going to put a vacuum on here and actually suck the bejesus out of the cockpit. <laughs> so any dust or anything that's in there will get pulled out. But um, I'm happy with how that looks, that's good. Right, so I'm going to leave that to dry and that's that. All right, so we're really looking like a Vulcan now. Nah, take the paper off. Here we go, we've got the model underneath. Uh, as you can see, I've gone round now, I've put some Mr. Surfacer around the underneath the... Uh, seam of the canopy. I've gone round with some um, Mr. Color Leveling Thinners on a cotton swab and removed it and then looked at my references and I discovered that Airfix have done a silly thing here. If you look, I've got a picture here, where is it? This is the um, V Bombers special, on target special V Bombers by Glenn Sands and Gary Madgwick, illustrated by Peter Scott. Um, Glenn's actually been in touch with me and thanked me for uh, for promoting his book. So thank you very much Glenn. I'm now back in touch with him and asking him for some more details on that aircraft there, which this is what this is going to be. So um, I'm trying to find out if that door was actually black, that gear door there, 
was that actually black or is it just absolutely covered in oil? So, uh, but looking at a picture, where is it now? I did find an image here looking at the tail end. Oh no, I think it was an XH, XH558. It was. Here we go. You see an image here of the actual um, removable ejection canopy and there is no seam at the back. So quite why Airfix moulded the back part of it as part of the fuselage and then had a join in it. I don't know. And you can see I've actually put filler in there. Yes, guys, I haven't used Mr. Surfacer because I know that if I use Mr. Surfacer, it's just going to sink, refill, sink, refill, sink, refill. So I've put some Tamiya filler in there. I'll sand that down and I'll probably spray it again with some black Mr. Surfacer. But um, yeah, there is no, you can see there is no seam there. And also don't forget, you've got these tiny little portholes here, which are actually molded in. I did ask the question, should, we, should they be there or not? And actually they should, and you can probably just see them there. I've got them masked off. That was some 1.2 millimeter masking circles. So that's pretty cool. Um, Airfix have actually done a lovely job of the, the canopy framing, the windscreen framing, you know, getting that real sort of chunky, um, almost bolted on look to it. It's, it's really, really nice. You can see it now with the black paint on. So I've got to wait for this filler to dry down before I can rub it down. And I need to get the whole thing primed then. Um, I'm sort of undecided how I'm going to paint it. I don't know which way I'm going to go. I'm also a little worried about this underside because when I hold it, this paint has been on here now for 48 hours and it's still sticky to the touch. I can leave thumbprints in it. So quite what's going to happen when I remove the masking tape, I do not know. Luckily, it's the, it's the underside, it's one colour. If, if we really do mess up, we can just go back, take it off and paint it again. <laughs> but um, I really don't want to be doing that, but we shall see. Um, so uh, I'll wait for that to dry and I'll get that rubbed down and then I'll come back and, um, and we'll see how it looks. Right, so that's that done, filled. Got over to Mr. Surfacer, let it dry and then sanded it back. And as you can see now with the grey primer, you can see even better the wonderful job that Airfix have done with that screen. It really is nice. I think this is a bit of a stupid idea what they've done here. I mean, not only did they mould this little lump as part of the fuselage here, but they actually moulded the rear of the canopy as part of the fuselage. It just seems bloody stupid. Why don't they just make one clear part that goes down? It's crazy. Um, because now the model has got the issue where this is actually a seam line here where it pops off. And then round the back, there is no seam, and I'm certainly not going to try scribing around now and just make a mess. So, you know, come on, Airfix, you should have done better than that. That's a bit stupid, really, I think. Um, so, you know, it also would have made cleaning up that, that seam on the fuselage a lot easier if you just moulded that as, a, as part of the canopy instead of as it is in real life. It just, there's no reason to not do it. It's no reason whatsoever. Crazy. So, anyway. Um, I'm going to call that a day now for this part. I think it's been quite a short one, but the reason is um, I want to allow this at least 24 hours to see if it's going to shrink because there's filler and Mr. Surfacer in there. It was quite a big gap. It was like a quite a big, a, a wide trench, if you like, not particularly deep, but quite wide because the, 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 the two parts were kind of radius, probably my fault for sanding. But um, you know, I'm going to let that go. So I'm going to call that a day for this part and then the next part we'll get on with doing the, the camouflage and everything. Um, so with this part we covered the mask and underside and we've covered the uh, the fitting of the canopy and everything and we'll see how, look, how good it looks when it's all unmasked after it's camouflaged. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all very soon for part 16. Um, in the meantime, I have probably, you're probably getting this after the Avon show, so I may well have seen some of you there, so hi. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm actually filming this on the Friday. Friday the, what is it today, the 6th of August, and the show is on Sunday the 8th of August. So either this part is going to be going up like the day I've seen you at the show, or maybe on the Monday, probably the day, probably Sunday. So uh, there we go, just another quick look. There we go, that's how she's going to look when she's all painted. <laughs> See you all soon, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.